Hello. Awesome. How are you? I'm doing great. That looks fantastic. <laughs> It's a good day for a ride. It is. It is. Thanks for coming over, Jake. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see you again. The old man's down the street. All right. He's going to come pull up in a second. Very good. Very good. Oh, it's sweet as a nut, isn't it? Yeah. It's just so sweet. That turn there, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, good Jake. Good to see you, too, as well. Yeah, great to see you. Oh, amazing. It's amazing. nice to be in the cul-de-sac. Yeah, thank you for coming. Really looking forward to this. Wow. <laughs> We've never had a sidecar combination before. I had this bike uh, built by a friend of mine at the time, Don Adams by name. He ran a motorcycle salvage business on the far eastern suburbs of uh, Pittsburgh. He'd already built one conversion. By that I mean stuffing a modern BMW motor in a slash two frame. And that one was a, a partial success. <laughs> he, he learned a great deal about how to make it work. By this time, I'd also bought an EML sidecar from St. Louis Motor Ad, built around a K100 motor because that was really about all that came from the original bike. But Don was also, at the time, a Ural dealer. So he had some of these chairs sitting around in inventory and he used one of these chairs on the original one that he built. I approached him about building one for me and he also built a, a twin to this because he wanted to employ what he'd learned on the first build. And what you see here is the result. It started life as an 800cc motor. A set of 1000cc jugs were put on it. As you may examine Later, uh, it's quite a tight fit in the frame. The exhaust presented a few problems, mostly with drivetrain issues. And one of the most important improvements he made was the twin disc front brake that was grafted off of a Japanese bike of which he had hundreds <laughs> in his inventory. As they say, he was a salvage yard. The brakes, I think, are amazing. I've seen a lot of other conversions. I think the R75 motor was a really popular one. It's slightly smaller than the R100 and the R80. And most of the other conversions I've seen have drum brakes, but we've got dual discs on here. I believe it's from a Yamaha SR500. And then when I had the bike rewired, I had them put steel braided brake line on there for us. And it really, really stops it quite well. It was a motorcycle that satisfied my desires for a classic looking bike with modern features. The motor is more than adequate. A full throttle takeoff will lift the front wheel and send you off at a 45 degree angle in a hurry. So those are seldom done, but <laughs> it's been very reliable through the years with the exception of the, <laughs> the electrics, <No. laughs> which uh, apparently wasn't Don's strong point. I've had two excellent motorcycle mechanics back in the day, back in Pittsburgh, where I acquired this and was living at the time. Are you wearing those rose-colored goggles when you look back? And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. To be fair, you haven't broken it. He hasn't broken down on it that often, but I have. A lot. <laughs> As a matter of fact, yes. He's had all the breakdowns. I was I was the owner of a relatively new uh, <laughs> concoction, and it, it worked quite well for me all the time I had it. Yeah, so the frame is a 68 R60 slash 2, and the motor, our best guess, without looking at the engine number, is 88 R80. It had a 1,000cc uh, kit put on it. So we moved west to Arizona in about 93, 94. And this, along with all the other motorcycles, sat in storage for probably 10 years. And then yeah. we got this one out and got it running. I've had all kinds of issues with this bike. <laughs> On the Slash 2 BMWs, they actually had two separate circuits. They had an ignition circuit and a lighting circuit. And I was riding this in downtown Portland to go pick up my wife from her office to go camping up on Mount Hood and the lighting circuit decided to self-destruct in a giant cloud of smoke. Actually it was all right because the ignition circuit was still intact and I could get home at least but we did a whole motorcycle rewire with I believe it was Joe Tessitore and second gear cycle up in St. John's. I think they're out of business now, but it was completely rewired from front to back. As with all old slash twos, this was the key. You could start the bike with a number 12 roofing nail. 
So we got rid of that. It's now the, the headlight actuator and we put a more modern ignition on it. And since that switch, we haven't really had any electrical problems, which is great. A buddy of mine, we flew down to San Francisco where it was being stored at my uncle's house and we drove it back. We thought it'd be a really fun idea to drive it up the coast for spring break. And we made it about 120 miles north and we were taken off from our campsite in the morning and the coupler on the drive shaft, we ripped all the teeth off the coupler. That's one of the drawbacks with putting the modern motor on there is the rear end is still slash two. It's still 1950s design, isn't it? 40s. 40s, yeah. So eventually that's a, that's a wear point. <laughs> and that happened on a Sunday and every motorcyclist knows that every dealership in, and repair shop is closed Sunday, Monday. Tuesday we called around, you need a special puller to pull the coupler off. And we ended up being referred to a tool and die shop in Redwood City, California. We walked in and you know, there's all these older German fellows running giant presses, stamping out metal parts. They kind of look at us like, what, what are you guys doing here? And we're holding this uh, swing arm for a slash two BMW. And they took a look at it and they, they whistled and out of the back comes a 90 year old man. He doesn't say anything to us. He just grabs the swing arm, looks at it and then disappears into the back and comes back out 10 minutes later with our part off and a brand new coupler for us. And he took us out to lunch and <laughs> Oh we found out he was a, he was an old Luftwaffe mechanic in World War II. Uh, he would uh, work on the uh, the airplanes, and um, he was just obsessed with BMWs. And he was one of the foremost authorities on slash twos in the entire area. Uh, he fixed it, got us back on the road, didn't charge us a thing. Yeah, Joe Groger was his name, Joaquin Groger. I, I, he just passed away a couple years ago, but yeah. So we continued on our journey, and we got to uh, Leggett, where Highway One meets up with 101 and our rear wheel started to come unlaced. I was riding it like a 21 year old and it put too much lateral stress on the, on the wheel. And so it just started to s gradually come completely unlaced. And we tried to tighten the spokes and true the wheel on the side of the road and ended up actually puncturing our tube. Uh, we learned a lot on that trip. We eventually got into Portland about 10 PM before we had to start class the, the following morning, but there's been a lot of ordeals on this motorcycle, but I feel like it's finally ironed out. It's, uh, it's an interesting machine. It's really built from the ground up to be a performance sidecar. It's kind of like riding a three-wheeled cart with wooden wheels. It, you, you kind of weave back and forth down the road and- The chair comes up in an eye blink. This is it's very light co yeah. co compared to the, the EML. It'll, it'll pop up in an instant if you're not careful or if you when you wanted to it's fun to to throw it up in the air and drive it that way will you put ballast in that then jake when you're riding it like if i had taken it out on the ovm ride i definitely would have put ballast in it for sure but if i'm just driving it to work or something no typically not i enjoy flying the hack does it come up quite a bit then yeah quite easily yeah it does it really does that must be a bit disconcerting to begin with though until it's you get used to it's it, an right? odd sensation for sure um, but I used to, I, I used to take the, the sidecars out in, in high school and just go uh, find a big parking lot and practice. And then, so the uh, right hand turn is exciting because the, the hat comes up, but the left hand turn is also great because you can effectively smash the hack into the pavement as you turn and then you, you can skid and it's pretty good. Although he almost flipped us over. <laughs> <laughs> one time trying to do one of those 180s in uh, 10 feet and uh, it was a, uh, we didn't crash, but we came damn near, I think stood the thing on that, actually that was in the EML, wasn't it? No, it was, was it in this, this one? yeah, yeah okay. there's, there's a scar on the bottom of the front. I mean, we <laughs> went up on the front of the sidecar, it was... That's the tightest turn anyone has taken in the coldest yeah. you did this morning. <laughs> I was getting my camera ready and you'd already turned. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a fun bike to ride. It's a great machine. It's got a lot of character. Well, I'm glad I had this motorcycle built way back when. It's been a crowd pleaser ever since. I always get very nice attention. I've never seen anything quite like it. It's a pretty unique combination of 
various parts. I accessorized it, as you can see, rather nicely. I enjoyed it with my family growing up. Jake has two sisters that spent a lot of time in this sidecar and the other one and on motorcycles in general. It is a legacy piece in my view. I've been glad to be able to pass it on to my son. I expect he to do the same thing someday with his family. Uh, it's a keeper. We'll, we won't be selling this. Yeah, uh, I grew up in this bike. I mean, I, I have really, really fond memories of camping in this bike, uh, picked up after school. It, the list goes on and on. So this is definitely one of my favorite bikes out of all the bikes we own. My dad's health has gotten worse over the years. I've become the steward for his bike collection. And this is one of the, the most special for sure. Yeah. Thanks very much for watching guys, this has been another tale from the cul-de-sac. Please remember to subscribe and click the little bell and you'll get a notice whenever I release a new video, usually every Sunday morning and sometimes during the week. If you look in there, so there's actually a drum brake on the sidecar as well. And this, you know, mechanically actuated lever right here, but it does more harm than good. <laughs> so we just usually ride with it kick forward so you can't act. it'll pull the, the the whole rig to the right side of the road and it's really not very effective but it's there it's it's Would interesting you, you can try the li <laughs> the linkage is so uh, rudimentary it's just it's not Russian. worth it it's a farm implement yeah <laughs>